So tell me, how did the uh, the first stunt work come about then getting into the movies? Uh, for me personally? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, they were looking for a double for Ninja Assassin. Uh, I happened to be uh, training with Kim Do, uh, you know, six six one they were they said we need a six two asian guy who could flip john valera reached out to kim doe i basically hijacked kim doe's uh audition tapes he used me because they would send him videos like remake this fight and it'd be like wushu do it again and we didn't do wushu we would just remake the fight send it send our falls send our kicks and uh they would say okay make something up and we just keep sending videos and um I wasn't there, but I guess and Chad was like, who's that guy that Kim's fighting? Who's who's that kid? Because he obviously never did wushu. He obviously never did certain type of martial arts, but he obviously is figuring something out. And John Valera goes, oh, I, I think that's Jeremy Marinus. They call him the prodigy or whatever. That was like a silly nickname my teacher gave me back in the day. Um Okay, guys, so if you enjoy content like this, and I certainly hope you are enjoying this content, you can help support me and my fan club over at Patreon, where you're going to get exclusive access into the life of Scott Adkins. You're going to get behind the scenes on all my latest movies, exclusive content that can be seen nowhere else. You're going to get an insight into my training regimen, the martial arts, the fitness, the bodybuilding, how I do certain things. You are going to get fight breakdowns, loads of them left, right and center. And on top of all that, you're going to get exclusive access to new episodes and extended footage from the art of action. If you're a Scott Adkins fan, it really is the place to be. So all you got to do is follow the link in the description below. And I really hope that I get to see you there. Yeah. And uh, he goes, uh, he, used to, he used to compete against my kid, Rudy. Rudy Raynon. If you guys don't know Rudy Raynon, do yourself a favor. Fastest kid with the commas. Um, so he said he. I think he competed against him a couple times. And Chad said, "Bring him to 87." And I was 17 at the time. So Kim Dill brings me. We we stayed on Arnold Chan's couch. I, I stayed on Arnold Chan's couch. I think Kim Dill had a yeah, yeah. extra room, and uh, they put us through the ringer for two weeks where I'd show up and uh, uh, 87 circuits at 87. Yeah. We would do circuits in the morning. What's funny is Chad was already in Berlin prepping Ninja Assassin. So um, they were recording us um, uh, learning um, whip chain on the spot, uh, uh, swords, everything they did in Ninja Assassin parkour. I wasn't even a free runner back then. Um, and I don't know if I actually got the title of free runner, but uh, they would just make me learn a bunch of stuff. And, um, you know, we'd be doing a six on one fight and, and JV would, you know, John Blair would say, Hey, okay, do spot number three. And I would have to know every spot in the fight. I was telling the kids. Right. This the day. Um, you got to know the choreography for every, everyone. Yeah. Old just school 87, yeah. man. They were relentless. If, you know, if I, if I was sitting there, and I had nothing to do if I was just a performer and I wasn't shooting or anything. Um, you know, at any moment, if somebody got hurt, you would have to already know that stuff. And if you didn't know it, it was like, what have you been doing this whole time? It's like, do your job. You should know every spot, including the hero spot. Um, wow. and nowadays with stunt people, they just come in, they learn their, their two or three beats to feed the hero then they get hit and then the next guy and you only have to know your spot no. that's like doing like repertory theater yeah for shakespeare in england yeah. like you're doing two shakespeare shows at once and while you're doing that you're rehearsing the next one you know yeah that hardcore. was it. yeah and and they would you know they would tie me sometimes oh, you got 30 seconds to learn this and they got to the point where the choreography was just so easy like, to learn um, just by watching. So, yeah. you know, people are always like, how, how are you doing this stuff just on, on the spot? I'm like, well, every time you do something now, my brain just downloads it. It's, it's like a, it's instilled in me. So once I start watching choreography, if people are rehearsing, uh, it's trained my brain to just, I'm just downloading what's going on and I can mm. perform both spots, um, both sides of the fight. And it's a big thing for Chad. So 
Awesome. After two weeks, they found out I was 17. They sent me back home. <laughs> they said, You're too young, man. We're not going to take you to Berlin. And uh, Oh, so you didn't go to Berlin? I didn't go to Berlin. Okay. It's awesome. um, they that said, was the introduction. Already... Yeah. They said, We had your foot in the door. Me. Yeah. Took a chance with Kim Dell, one new guy. So uh, um, we're not going to bring out a 17 year old. You're too young. Whatever. Come back. So Chad says, uh, come back when you're 18 and uh, you can train with us and we'll see. And so I came back um, for a whole year. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know anybody well enough in LA to stay at their place. Uh, for a year, I slept at the gym. I know this was like my big story back in the day. I slept at the gym because um, I was, Chad found me sleeping in my car in Inglewood. Uh, right. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm sleeping in my car. You don't know anybody? No, sir. He's like, so he gave me a key after four months of sleeping in my car, gave me a key to the gym. Our gym, as glorious as 87 seems, never had showers, never had <laughs> showers. So I was ninja bathing. <laughs> and then uh, for one year, I wasn't allowed to take stunt jobs. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but um, Chad, Chad was like, okay, you're training under me. Now you're not allowed to take any jobs until I say it's okay. And I was like, okay. Wow. And so for one whole year, he didn't let me take any jobs. It's and, like, like a Kung Fu movie when you've got to train, oh, you're, you're trying to train with the master and eventually yeah. the master's like, okay, I'll train you, but you don't take any jobs until I say so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, this guy didn't sleep either. Uh, so when people are talking to me about 5 a.m. gym stuff, uh, this guy, we would be pre-visiting till 10 o'clock sometimes, 1030. And then, you know, everybody would go home and come back the next day at 9 a.m. Well, JJ had his classes in the morning at 7 a.m. But Chad would wake me up at 5 a.m. I would hear the, the gate. We had this old rickety gate that closes our front door. And I would sleep in the lobby on the couch. So crack, and I would sit up. <laughs> morning, sir. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that's how he said good morning. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I'm just waking up, sir. And it's funny if you, if, you know, anybody's watching this, you'll hear my Chad impressions. But, uh, you know, yeah. now he's nice director, Chad. But back in the day, he was, you know, he was. Yeah. No, he's, uh, he, he, he can't be intimidating, <laughs> but that's why he's so good at his job. He's, uh, yeah. Very strict and serious, but just amazing. Yeah, I'm he scared would, of Chad. Chad, if you're watching, <laughs> I fear you. He does, he does that to people, man. But he would yeah. wake me up at 5 a.m. And I'm like, what are you doing? Don't you have a life in my brain? I would never say it. He's, a, he's like, you should be training swords or or trampoline or something. Every day was something different. You should be doing swords. Okay, so I'll start training swords. Yeah. The next morning, wake up. What the fuck are you doing? I'm about to brush my teeth. You should be on the trampoline already. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. And I wouldn't even, yeah. I wouldn't question that. I would just, yes, sir. And I would go and I'd start training. Well, I guess you're going to represent him, aren't you? So it's like, no, you, you better be ready. Yeah. If you're, if you're well, going out with my name attached to you, or 87 11 brand, we're going to make yeah. sure you're ready. And he was so funny because, uh, you know, a year later, I get this call uh, from Ben Cook. If anybody knows the name, yeah. it's not quite yeah. there. And he, uh, he says, I want you to do an audition. We're having a live audition. So um, I told Chad, I said, hey, sir, I'm getting um, offered a, to come audition. And he's like, oh, yeah, for what? The last airbender. And he's like, yeah. He goes, you go, you do your audition. And then when you get the call back, tell him you're working for Chad. And he had this like smirk. <laughs> And uh, so I go, I do the audition. It was massive audition. And I, uh, I get the call and Ben's like, Oh, we'd like to have you on the team. And I was like, sir, I really appreciate it. But uh, I'm, I'm working for Chad. I had Chad never told me uh, I was doing it. I didn't know how it worked. So I, I didn't, I didn't know I had a job coming up. Uh, that was actually expendables. Um, oh. We started prepping expendables like that week that I told him I was working for Chad um and uh ben i remember ben said something funny obviously they were friends he's like you tell chad fuck off whatever he said something yeah. and then i told chad like oh i booked the job he's like of course you did he's like i fucking trained you and <laughs> it was like a big like 
he was like a proud teacher moment. He was like, ah. he's like, wait till they get a hold of you. Um, Brilliant. And then Brilliant. from that moment on, the prodigy uh, was ready. Yeah. The, <laughs> from that moment on, uh, and and these are all very vivid memories to me. Maybe Chad forgot uh, a lot of this stuff already because he's such a busy guy. But for me, that was like the turning point. And after that, uh, that's when I finally turned uh, nineteen. Uh, I was on, you know, three movies a year um, and through not three movies, like on my MDB, I have three movies. It was like three full runs a year, two or three uh, with right. chat. And, and it, it just hasn't stopped since it was like 14 years ago. Um, Obviously yeah. we met on um, Expendables and yeah. uh, that was a whirlwind for myself as well as everyone else with all those action stars. But yeah. the, the light, this this blew me away um man of tai chi so how old are you when you did this uh, i think i was that was 2011 so i was 19 turning tw uh 20, was it just uh, after expendables um or, or before 11 it was after um just after, maybe just a year after, yeah. a year or two after that was yeah. a surreal um experience that was really cool actually just tell me how that opportunity came up. Yeah. Um, quickly, and then we'll watch the fight. Yeah. Uh, Sir Keanu Reeves, uh, I guess, called Chad and said, hey, um, I want you to be a part of my film, but I owe it to Baye Wu Ping to, to action direct because of The Matrix and their history there. And, yeah. you know, Chad did The Matrix, and he, you know, was, he would, you know, bow down to, to Wu Ping. He said, of course. Keanu said, I, I want to, I need Wu Ping to action direct, but I can't do my first directorial debut movie without you. So he said, I want you to bring two of your guys and um, you guys will be in charge of one sequence. And um, that was the sequence. So we did about a week or two of rehearsing in LA where we would bring in Eric Poulsen, who teach like MMA stuff and how, Chad would get me to transition in tricking. That, that, that's all Chad right there. Uh, right. Um, you know, Keanu wanted to see Tai Chi versus MMA. And uh, none of us at 87 did Tai Chi, but, you know, Chad knew Tiger and trained with Tiger from back in the Matrix days. So he kind of had a feel, and, and I'm sure Chad does some Tai Chi. But um, we're over here trying to put together Tai Chi and MMA and basically did that for two weeks. When we went to China – um basically they would take what we did and you know because tiger was like a, a 13 year champion in tai chi like legit yeah. uh tai yeah. chi and so he just took what we did and and made it his his own and you know they changed a few sections here and there and it was two weeks of me and tiger training in this really cold we were training in snowboarding Beijing film studios right yeah man they didn't have an they didn't have a heater we had the pa outside patio heaters inside on the floor and Wu Ping would have his uh, cigarette on the yeah. floor always smoking right and every time his, yeah. his cigarette hand dropped to his hip his assistant ran behind him with the mental scan <laughs> yeah I've seen that patch. I felt like I mean, that, that was assistant is like some sort of like ninja He's got some yeah. speed. <laughs> Dude, he and he would run from the because he wasn't allowed to be on the floor until he was catching ashes. So he would same, run. Same thing was still floor. happening on Ip Man 4. Oh, it's so nuts. <clears throat> Is yeah. it I wonder if it's the same guy or probably <laughs> the people were moving like they were gonna get their feet chopped off if they didn't <laughs> do, yeah. do the job. It's a different you know, uh, it's a different vibe over there. But so how how many days did you shoot this fight then? This was over the course of three days. Uh, but, uh, you know, Keanu uh, didn't want us staying at the hotel that they had at CFG because um, you know how far it is from center Beijing. So he actually hooked us up with a hotel that had Western to toilets in downtown uh, Beijing or in the center. Right. And so my day was an hour and a half drive to the CFG, the China Film Group Studios, um, oh. I had to get tattoos on my leg. Um, 
You should so have stayed was... at the Beijing film studios. I mean, I'll be honest, the food wasn't great, but it's better than that drive. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that was the thing. So I had an hour and a half to two hours of makeup in the mornings. So we would start at 6 30 AM. So I was getting picked up at three, three 30. And then, you know, they don't, it's like the wild, wild west out there. They don't have yeah. a 12 hour limit to shoot. We would just shoot. And I remember sometimes we'd shoot for like 14 hours, 16 hours for this fight. And um, actually the end fight that showed up that you're watching right now in the movie is two minutes shorter than the original. Wow. I'd love to see the full fight. fight. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if I could, I could go to Keanu now and say, Hey sir. Yeah. You know that fight. I wonder if I could get it out of him. Listen, I need to just, talk about this move here because it's great i mean this is a jet Li special but the way you you elevated it going down and rolling that into a into jujitsu hole that's just great man thank you no this was like really the first time i got to play because a lot of it was um you know chad would say this is what i want um he, he would say i want a cool jujitsu move so he would have eric Poulsen like oh there's a cool move like a a cool hold like this and then chad and jv would look at me and say how could you get into that move seamlessly like you're throwing a taekwondo move and then end up in a lock how can you hook him and then you know we would just um it was just me me jv and and chad on the floor for two weeks straight just trying to figure stuff like this out and then so three days you shot this but you're talking like 12 hours a day so or, or longer yeah this the shortest day while shooting this was 12 hours yeah uh, yeah it was just me and tiger well, that, that's Actually, why the fights are so good in hong kong movies because over there yeah they just grind it out don't they they take their time and they spend the time to do it I actually think I I don't know if you could tell. Oh, pause that frame right there. Uh, like Which one of one? his close ups where he's doing Tai Chi, right? Uh, let his left arm come into frame. Uh, you can see his yeah. pad under his his uh, left in his left sleeve. So in the earlier part of this fight, where we're both coming off the ground and I throw a round kick from my knee, um, I pretty much broke Tiger's elbow. <laughs> For the, really? for the rest Whoa. of this fight, uh, Tiger's elbow. Which move? Like a, you see that? Like it looks like a pad. Uh, it, there's, oh, yeah. it, it looks inflamed. That's his elbow, dude. <laughs> I was throwing the kick, and I was throwing the kick, and he's. It's supposed to glance off of his forearm. And Wu Ping said I was throwing it too soft. He said I could tell you're stunt man, like. He would yell at me in Chinese and then have no someone power. translate it. And he'd say, uh, it looks too soft. You got to go kick him. Don't worry. He's stunned, man. And uh, you see it there, right, where his uh, elbow's bent. That's actually his yeah. elbow, man. So to see his right oh, one's wow. skinny and his left one is super thick right oh, there. Wow. And uh, when I was throwing the kick, Chad said, "Be you know, be, be careful, be careful. So I'd be careful because, you know, at this point, Tiger's not just a stunt man; He's a lead. Yeah. And finally, after two or three takes of Wu Ping badgering me about I'm, I'm too soft, Chad goes, okay, he wants contact. He goes, nail him. And I just looked at Tiger, and Tiger was such a, a pleasure to work with. And I was like, hey, yeah. brother, like, what's up? I was like, I'm going to send it. He's like, okay, no problem. Put my hand up. I go, I'll just, it's coming. So, you know, do what you got to do to deflect. He goes, no problem, no problem. And so I sent it, and I just remember hearing it go, what? And it, like, went through his guard, and Mm. they had to cut him out of his first jacket because his elbow swole up so much. So the rest of the fight must have been pretty miserable for him to perform. Yeah, but, you know, he's a stone-cold killer, that man. So he's his face is like, no problem, brother, no problem. And... You know, every time we see each other now, it's uh, we always have to talk about the our experience on this one because it was a grind. And it's funny because this is cool. This no... sorry, this this yeah. uh, move there, bang, <laughs> just doing it. No wires, go for it, bang. Yeah, 
That was Chad's thing. He, when I started, he said, I didn't hire you cause you could trick. I could, I hired you cause you could trick into Rex. He goes, That's <laughs> your, your job is not to land tricks. Your job is to figure out all the weird ways you can fall from tricks. So was the floor nice and padded? Zero. It was, zero. Oh. it was, yeah, that was just uh, like, it was like plywood. Was a missed opportunity. The roughest roughest carpet i've ever had in my life like i just had raspberries all over the place um yeah it would hurt to shower after the scene because the the carpet was like uh you know those 90s you know those 90s maroon uh office uh like the squares of carpet it was like burn city yeah yeah it was the worst that was probably it could have you know it's china it's you know you just survive so close range. Yeah. Um, I remember talking to JJ and saying, look, we're doing this film in, in LA, Isaac film. Can you recommend anyone to be the fight coordinator? And uh, they recommended you. See? <laughs> we went ahead and did JJ. it, yeah. JJ, I can always rely on JJ to uh, depend on him to put my name in for stuff. He's always taking care of me. So he said... Hey, Bubba, what's up, sir? You know, uh, Isaac Florentine's doing a martial arts movie with Scott Atkins in town. Oh, that sounds fucking awesome. He's like, yeah, and he wants you to fight coordinate. And he always made you feel like you were wanted by somebody else, but really he's right, like, yeah. he's like, they want we you to fight We just said, JJ, who's, who's good enough? Come on, throw a spot. Yeah. We need a young up-and-comer <laughs> who, who we can afford. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah he, i'm like now i know the business i'm like ah, they just probably want whoever jj's going to appoint right and but jj always made yeah. you feel well, we were hoping we were hoping jj would probably say <laughs> i'll do it <laughs> but okay who do you recommend then you know the drill i know the drill I mean, but we, like, we wanted someone from the eight seven crew because yeah. you know we were aware of what was going down and it's like come on yeah that's the place that's the yeah. mecca I remember the first time we we came into a rehearsal together and we were talking and you were like, man, I haven't seen you since Expendables 2. It's good to see you, brother. Uh, what do you have planned? And I said, Scott, like, we're going to do some fun fights. We're going to do all this stuff and it's going to be amazing. And we're not going to trick. And your face was like, what? And I said, yeah, Scott all of your fans and all the people who know me and my background are just going to expect trick city between Jeremy and, and Scott. So we're just going to like, we're going to do some fights, but we're going to just get down and dirty and, and we're going to try to make it feel as film realistic as possible. And um, we're not going to trick. And you know, I remember your, your face, but, but we're going to sneak in a back kick, right? I was like, no, no back <laughs> kick. You're fighting Mexican cartel. You don't need back kicks. You should be shanking all of us. And uh, I remember There's definitely uh, a good shank in there. Yeah, there was a there was a good you turned somebody into a popsicle. Uh, <laughs> That's my favorite bit. Oh, it was Jimmy Choo. You turned him into a popsicle. Yeah. Straight um, in the arsehole. I mean, Jesus, that was rough. Dude, yeah. That, oh, but we man, did was... we did sneak in the back kicks. So come on, rem- remind yeah, me. Were when you, were I you left playing me up? Yeah. <laughs> well, you got it, well, man. Yeah, no, I mean, when I looked it back, because I remember I left early because I think Chad was pulling me onto a show, so I left a day early, and you guys finished the fight with Cartago, Brian Cartago and Jimmy Chu. Yeah. And uh, I remember you told me, you said, ah, we snuck in the back kick. I hope you're okay with that. I said, oh, dude. Man, I see, I forget these oh, things, yeah. Oh, man, I have a photographic memory of conversations. Yeah. So. He, I remember watching it back though, and it it fits so well for me. I was like, you know, it's not a Scott Atkins movie with at least at least a jump back kick or something. Like, so yeah, you got to get you got to get a bit of it in. I mean, it wasn't a crazy trick; it's just a jump back kick. I mean, come on. And anyway, I shanked him in the not- arsehole straight after, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you went two in the leg, one in the asshole. Bow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bah, bah, bah. And then, no, in the stomach, right? In the in the in the yeah. the body here yeah. and then. Well, yeah. Oh, it was the leg, body, then ass. Yeah, anyway. catch, the round, catch the round kick with the knife, pull it out, stab with the legs. Oh, stab. you see, there's the photographic memory right there. Mine's terrible. Yeah. Do you know what? But, I think I've actually lost brain cells pretending to get hit. Forget about yeah. actually getting hit, but bah, bah, duff. 
Yeah. I mean, Can't be Joe good. Rogan says it all the time. It's not the hit. It's the shaking when you, when you hit the ground and the shaking of the brain that that's what get you. And now yeah. I'm like, that's why I'm so stupid. I shake my head. I want like for the last 14 years, I've been shaking my head. I slur my words now. You're doing um, better than me. Was it great to get the uh, the fight coordinator spot on, on a John Wick movie? Yeah, John Wick 4, fight coordinating John Wick 4 was, was a great one for me because the career aspect of my growth under my teacher. Okay, so if you liked that video, then please like the video. And if you want to see more videos of the same sort of thing, then subscribe and you know the drill, push the notification bell. And if you don't, then... I don't know, maybe I'll have to find you and smash the lights out, as the great boy once said.